So back to school season is now in full swing as we move from July to August, and that means a lot of new PC sales. Now, I understand that most students, especially those going away to college, will likely be buying laptops, but there is still a select group of people that would rather build a desktop PC and leave it in their dorm room, their apartment, or if you're a high school student, just at home, and maybe would rather forego the laptop. So for those of you that fall into that category, this video is right for you. This is the Starter Student PC Build 2017. directly into the parts list for this build. I do want to point out that because this is a student build, this is a full setup. This is the PC, the keyboard, mouse, and this is also going to be the monitor included. And the total price tag as of the recording of this comes out to just under $420 if you're willing to jump through some rebate hoops to get some uh, extra money back here and there. Also keep in mind that this PC is put together with the idea of upgradability in mind. That means our power supply may have a little bit extra in it. That means we may not be using all of our RAM slots on the motherboard. And that means the motherboard we pick, in fact, has an upgrade path for the processor. And we're not just stuck with something like an FX8350 from 2011-ish. And no, we are not putting eight AMD cores in this PC. So enough wasting your time, here's the parts list. And of course, leading off our uh, student PC 2017, we have the Pentium G4560. This is a dual core, but quad thread processor for just $80. And the thing I love about this processor is it gives us a really good entry level processor for a really great price, but it also with four threads gives us a lot of flexibility with what we do with this system in the future. If we add a dedicated graphics card, for example, we suddenly have a budget uh, gaming PC that can handle modern games at reasonable frame rates. So I really like this processor for a lot of budget builds and it should serve this build just fine. For the motherboard, we're going a very basic route with the ASRock B250M motherboard because we don't actually need a whole lot of features for this uh, PC build. We're not going with a higher end chipset because we're not going to be overclocking our processor at all. We do only have two memory slots available to us, which will sort of limit our decisions on the memory we're going to install on this board. But other than that, we really don't need a whole lot of features, and this motherboard will provide a solid platform to begin. For memory, this is where we're a little bit limited with this system. We're going with a G Skill Aegis 8 gigabyte stick, we're going with a single stick because we only have those two DIMM slots available. And the idea here is that we can always upgrade to 16 gigabytes if we only use one stick now, and then we can add one stick later. But again, with the price point in mind, this RAM will do just fine. At 2133 megahertz, it's not exactly a blazing fast stick of RAM, but it'll be fine. For our storage, we're gonna be using a one terabyte hard drive, but if you're somebody that can't live without an SSD, you could always just buy a lower capacity SSD. The idea here is that this will allow you to install some uh, games down the road if you end up adding a dedicated graphics card, but also it'll allow you to store a lot more files on the system than if you invested the same amount of money in an SSD, in which case you'd be getting something like a 120 gigabyte SSD, and you just won't have all that much space altogether. That being said, one terabyte should be enough storage for most students, and of course, if you need to add storage with a PC, it's as simple as saving up the money to buy the extra drive, whether it be an SSD or another hard drive. And for our case, we're using a Vivo Micro AT TX case for $28 and here's where I would suggest just buying sort of what's cheap uh, this particular case doesn't have a whole lot of great features on it it is a somewhat minimalistic design which I do like however on the inside you'll notice that it's unpainted probably has a lot of sharp edges may not be fun to build in but it again like many of the other components in the system should get the job done just fine and the nice thing about the case is once it's built and the side panel is put back on it'll actually look just fine on a desk powering our system we have an EVGA 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply and this power supply has enough wattage to give us a little bit of flexibility in the future specifically if we decide to add a graphics card to the mix later on now this particular power supply is not modular and the case that we picked because of cost again doesn't give us a whole lot 
of cable management solutions that'll really be nice for this type of power supply. So you'll just be tucking away a lot of these excess cables wherever you can find places for them. But because there is a side panel on this case with no window, the extra ketchup and mustard cables laying around really shouldn't be that big of an eyesore. And now that the PC tower is complete, we can move on to our monitor and peripherals. And for our monitor, we selected the Acer V246HQL 23.6 inch LED LCD monitor. Uh, that's a mouthful, and it comes in at $110. This is a commodity class uh, 1080p panel, but if you want a bigger panel, smaller panel, lower resolution, higher resolution, uh, depending on what amount of money you're wanting to spend on your monitor, you can just sort of go your own route here. I picked this one because it's a 1080p, 23.6 inch monitor at a reasonable price point. However, if you find a better deal, I highly recommend you go with you know the better deal that you find. For our peripherals, this isn't a combo that a lot of gamers will like, but it'll be very student friendly, and that is the Logitech wireless combo, the MK270. And on Amazon right now, I believe it's more like $21 instead of $23. Now for the keyboard, I like the fact that it takes after the K120 in both layout and the feel of the keys. I also like that it adds multimedia keys, which the K120 is lacking. And being wireless, it will allow you to have a lot of flexibility on your desk, for example, if you're not using the keyboard you can just pick it up and toss it off to the side and put books down papers to write on whatever the case may be it's easier to get off your desk completely than a wired solution and the mouse while nothing special will sort of get the job done and again much like the keyboard being wireless it is just as easy as picking the mouse up and dropping it off the table onto your bed onto the floor whatever the case may be if you need to clear off that space it's much easier to get out of your way and allows you greater flexibility as I know that a lot of dorm rooms with the desk provided in those dorm rooms a lot of times you don't have a whole lot of room to waste and anytime you can declutter your desk very simply that's going to be a win for the student. So looking at our grand total for the entire setup, including, by the way, at the bottom, a Windows 10 Pro key, which if you don't know how to get one of those for about $6, I will link a card above so you can check out how you can get Windows 10 for a very cheap cost. The total cost of the build comes in at $419.81 for the entire setup, and it is a setup that should allow you to have a lot of upgradability down the road as your budget allows. Now the nice thing about using that Pentium processor is we do have integrated graphics, so we don't need a dedicated graphics card. However, if you are wanting to game, you're gonna wanna add a graphics card, and for about $100, you can add a GTX 1050. You can check out the used market. Your power supply definitely has enough with 500 watts to power some uh, used cards that may not be quite as efficient, or you can always get something a little bit more powerful like a 1050 Ti, an RX 570, 580, you know, whatever is available and whatever fits your needs. But do be aware if you go over about the GTX 1060, then you're gonna start seeing a severe CPU bottleneck and you're not gonna get any more returns out of buying a, a higher end graphics card than a 1060 or a 580-ish. Uh, and you may be actually better off with those diminishing graphics card returns to stick with a 1050 Ti or an RX 570 and below. But do be aware that if you go over uh, the mid-tier cards, then your CPU will definitely be the bottleneck in your system. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of this particular PC build. What adjustments would you make to it to make it a little bit better suited to your use case or to students in general? And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment down below. All those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They have the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.